Hello guys and welcome back to another build order video for Halo Wars 2. We're behind enemy lines now. We're going to be delving straight into more banished build order videos. Kicking it up off next with Atriox. So we've got a couple of builds recorded for Atriox at the moment. There's a lot of versatility with Atriox that you can do, but we're going to be showing one of the most popular builds and very successful, which is the uh, Quick Expo build. Uh, taking fortifications first, countermeasures second, uh, and trying to get a base up as fast as possible. So to do this build, kicking straight off into the game, we are going to open generator first. Because we're going to need that extra power. Um, one, because we're going to need to get our chosen out early uh, to be able to defend that secondary base because it's going to be very taxing on our eco even with the fortifications so we need a strong unit like the hero unit Aatrox is chosen to defend that base now we open grunts because uh, they only cost 100 blue we don't want to really be opening chopper at the moment because it is kind of a defensive play style to start with but then you start getting very aggressive once that second base is built so as always make sure your generator is upgraded on time every time gives you that little bit of extra resources which does come in clutch in uh, busy games um, and competitive games so same with your harvesters first harvester first gen always gets upgraded and make sure your grunts are always active uh, picking up resources so if you don't know how to do that you can do Q commands um, so you don't basically you can basically queue up loads of commands and then forget about that unit and it'll do it automatically as long as you're not hitting all units all of the time and um, you can do this on Xbox by holding right trigger and pressing X on each command you want it to do uh, and on PC you have your own key that you can set for that uh, normally it's shift and click so there we go, 122, already building that uh, secondary base there. Uh, you want to build it just kind of after your fourth pad. Now, so fourth pad's coming up there. You're going to go War Council 5th to get the Chosen out, as I said earlier. Make sure you continuously collect blue. The reason this is so important is because you don't want to lose your mini bases. It's still early in the game. So, I mean, a low level opponent probably won't be still in mini bases yet. A high level would have probably already took one off here, yeah. so you can choose to collect your mini bases first and then go for the expo, but bear in mind it will delay that expo. Uh, so Chosen's coming out right on time, the second it gets built, we're going to be building him out two minutes in, just before two minutes, we're already queuing up that Chosen to defend the base that is coming up. At two minutes, you're not really going to get much aggression from your opponent, um, especially in AI, obviously in this case they won't have scouted yet. Most scouts come around the two and a half minute mark where our base will already be built, the Chosen will already be out, so for your opponent to react to that is going to be very difficult for them. So once that base is built, you are going to be going double racks on there with an apex. Uh, the reason we take countermeasures is to give the jump pack brutes the trip mines when they're jumping over units. Uh, the trip mines do a lot of damage uh, when in mass numbers. Uh, they slow the enemy. Uh, I think they've reduced it from a stun to a slow. It's about 85%, 95% slow uh, now when they uh, nerf that. Um, and obviously you've got the stun when the jump pack brute lands on the unit as well. So a lot of versatility from these jump pack brutes. Chosen already out, we're going to be taking our first power node nice and early. No aggression from the opponent, safe to do so. We don't need to defend the expo yet. Our build is spot on, on point, and not disrupted. We've got our mini bases, so we're looking pretty good in this game right now. Only three minutes in, up to 15 population, double racks coming out. Soon as you've got the upgrade for the Chosen, as you just saw there, you want to destroy the War Council and get a second generator. This allows you to get into Tech 2 a lot faster and afford all of these jump pack boots that you're going to be spending. Again, the key is power here, so we're going to be picking up more power nerds. And there's the scout from the opponent, 330. So normally ranked, you would get a scout a lot earlier than that. This is legendary AI. Um, I, I don't find any of the AIs difficult, to be honest. I, I know a lot of people on the forums and stuff do. Um, but that just comes with a learning curve and knowing how to play the game, which is what these videos are for. So we've got two power nerds, we've got three jump up brews, we've got chosen. And we've got 33 population. The engineers that we're building are to keep our Chosen alive during engagement. So you're going to have to micro a bit there. As soon as the Chosen shield drops, you want to back him off and heal him up with the engines. And remember the engines bubble or the Y ability, E ability on uh, my keybinds. Pops a bubble which reduces damage by 40%. That is huge. 
Uh, they're just very weak against infantry, so you need to be careful. So opponents here already tried matching us on an expo, but the problem about UNSC trying to kill bases like ours is that they don't have the damage that Banish do in terms of building killers. So our jump pack brutes with the chosen gonna shred through this base very quickly. And as you saw on third point there, we go dying breath. Dying breath is a very, very good early leader power. Uh, your units, when your units lose all the health and they're gonna die, uh, dying breath keeps them alive for an extra eight seconds. And that works with your chosen as well. So you can get more utility out of them. And from experience using dying breath on four jump pack brutes, uh, can kill a generator before they actually your opponent can kill them, which is really good for sneak attacks and uh, things like that, um, and sniping gens, which will really put you ahead. It's a really good leader power. So our opponent doing uh, a classic supply pad, all five supply pads on the main base here. Very unusual to see, uh, but not unheard of. I have seen on this on ladder from a few people that I've matched actually. Uh, but you definitely don't want to neglect getting a, a power extractor because you will be very far behind. So we have enough power to go tech two now, like five minutes 30, which isn't too bad considering the amount of power we've spent on tech one uh, and the units we're building. I mean, we're 66 population, so a late tech is completely fine if you have this much map dominance. Opponent's been wiped out. Uh, so give this build a try on ladder because you will do really well with it. Um, I've got a different build for more aggressive maps like Mirage, Frontier, Fishers, where you wouldn't really want to use this build because you have to prioritize the minis and get more aggressive earlier earlier on so i will post that build later on as well and um, so let's just talk about tech 2 after this build so we're going to put down a third power extractor here i mean that's just because we're so comfortable in the game i would not recommend putting on a third power extractor at all if you're behind uh but when you're this comfortable you can you go uh, first thing you want to do get your war council up upgrade your chosen he's very powerful on tech 2 especially if you manage to gain vet 1 uh from the early aggression and keeping him alive uh on tech 1 there so at the moment, we're just dancing around, wiping out our opponents. So it's tech two, you want to go into double racks. Uh, keep your engines as well. If you if you want about three or four engines to keep that chosen alive. Um, and you want, if you've got loads of jump pack brutes still on the map, you can go for dark skies because these things become unkillable with dark skies pretty much. They're so hard to kill. You can strip a base and get so much utility out of them. Otherwise, you want to be going into a typical banished counter ball. Rangers, Hunters, Reavers. We're playing a Forge a forge here. Generally, Forge players go into Warthogs with the Forge Hog on Tech 2. So you can kind of predict that, anticipate that, and start building Hunters off the bat, essentially, when you get into Tech 2. But hard to show in this game because it's been so easy against the AI. Um, as mentioned before, we will be getting onto the advanced guides where I'll be demonstrating these type of builds on ladder against real opponents and showing you how they play out in real terms because they do change slightly. I mean, you can't just do this build and expect to win the game automatically. Things do adapt during a game and you do have to adapt with them. So that has been the Atriox build. I hope you liked it. Make sure you like, follow. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Twitch because I do a lot of live streams with Halo Wars 2 and I can give real live experience to you guys, answer your questions and all of that. Um, and I will promise to get more videos out shortly. Thanks guys for watching. Peace out.